Abraham experienced it and his name was changed. Sarah experienced it and she got laughter. Moses experienced it and he went from hiding to leading. David experienced it and became God's beloved. Elijah experienced it and brought down fire. A savior has come to you. A healer has come to you. A deliverer has come to you. A redeemer has come to you. You will not miss your miracle. Now, it's your time. Experience the supernatural in this month's Global Crusade themed The Glorious Visitation of Christ Happening Live in Ghana. God is ready to move. Also featuring our ministers, church workers, and professional conference team enabling grace and power for the end time harvest. The youth aren't left behind as they are moving upward to higher heights with the Impact Academy. Join us from the 28th to 25th of April at Independence Square, Osu, Accra. The word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a good, good shemulu. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your people. Thank you for so many newcomers that are here with us. We're praying, Lord, that tonight you'll reach their lives in your word in Jesus' name. The fathers and the mothers and the children and the younger people who have come. Lord, I pray that you touch everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Reveal the purpose of Christ to us. And the reason for his sacrifice reveal unto us. And the reason why he came, why he died. And why he gave his life as a sacrifice for the salvation of humanity. Lord, impress it on every heart in Jesus' name. Bless all our leaders, all our pastors, all our overseers, all our workers and members, and all our invitees in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word. We pray, Lord, we will not be ignorant. Like many people are ignorant of what they ought to know in the word of God. Touch every life, Lord. Shine the light in every heart. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You give me another amen before you sit down. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. So just a joy to be with you. I've enjoyed every minute you have spent here until now. And I pray that you'll enjoy and also be enlightened the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those who are outside, I identify with you. We thank uh, the Lord that he has brought many of us and then the inside of the building, wonderful building. I said wonderful building. Uh, it's not able to contain everybody, but um, as you are there, I pray that uh, you'll pay attention in Jesus' name. I wish I could come out there to see your faces, beautiful faces, like uh, the faces of the people in front of me. God bless everyone in Jesus' name. Now we come to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. We're studying about something very important, very essential. Actually, this is the second part of the divine revelation that Jesus gave unto a man called Nicodemus. Look at chapter 3 verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named, tell me the name, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And then he told Jesus, he recognized Jesus as a teacher, come from God, master, come from God, a person that came to reveal the mind of God to humanity. And then Jesus told him immediately, in verse 3, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The conversation continued as Jesus revealed more and more about this important thing about being born again. He said in verse 5, Jesus answered verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water 
and of the spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then he continued to explain that there are two aspects of life. There are those who are born of the flesh and they are fleshly. There are those who are born of the spirit and they are spiritual. And he said, he illustrated by the movement of the wind. That the wind blows and there is the operation of the wind. You cannot see the wind. But you can see the effect and the operation and the movement of the trees and everything. You can even feel it if it blows on you. He said, so is everyone that is born of the spirit. What does that mean? It means that so is everyone a man or a woman. So is everyone illiterate or educated. So is everyone. There is, there is no difference. The air will breathe whether you are great or you are low. The same air. And the same way the air that you breathe, that it walks your body and sustains your life. This new birth, this new life, being a new creature in Christ, the same thing. Whether you're in the west or you're in the south, you're in the north or you're in the east, or you are maybe far away in America or here in Africa, it's the same thing. The effect of the wind is the same everywhere. And the effect of the new birth, and the effect of the new nature, and the effect of the regeneration, and the effect of the justification, and the effect of the forgiveness that God gives, and the effect of the new life that he gives us, the same effect is everywhere. If you are born again today, if you were born again many years ago, so is everyone that is born of God. It is the same thing. And in this second part of uh, the study we're looking at today now, we're starting from verse 9, and the false uh, word there is Nicodemus. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? He was perplexed. He was confused. He didn't understand. He was a learned man. He was a religious man. In fact, he was a teacher by his own area. And was a teacher, a master in Israel. And yet, he said, how can these things be? The second part of Christ's revelation on the new birth is so indispensable an experience and these important statements concerning eternal life are lost to many in religious circles and missed by many people around us there are many people you are going to confront every day like nicodemus and they're going to be asking you born again a new life a new creature a spiritual life, all things passing away, all things becoming new. You mean somebody can live this life without going into darkness, without going into evil, without living in sin, without behaving like everybody else, a new life completely born again. And they're saying, how can these things be? Because many people around us, although they're educated, many people around us, although they're learned, they are at sea. They don't understand. They are confused. They are perplexed. It is like, how can that be? Leaders in religion who are ignorant of this very thing are blind leaders. And these blind leaders are leading the blind. And if a blind man leads another blind man, the Bible tells us that the result will be a disaster because they'll fall into the ditch. That's why Jesus asked him a question in verse 10. Look at verse 10. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Are thou a master, a teacher, a leader, a ruler in Israel, and knowest not these things? What do you teach your people? What do you tell your people? What do you reveal to your people? If you're a master of Israel, a ruler in Israel, and yet you don't know this, and you're ignorant of this important thing, look at what Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Matthew chapter 15. I'm reading here from verse 14. It says, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, tell me the result. Both shall fall into the ditch. And what the Lord was saying is, these Pharisees and these Sadducees and these masters of the law and these masters and rulers and leaders in Israel, like Nicodemus, you don't understand this? 
This is the very ABC of the Christian life. And these are the thing that truly really matters because except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And except you are born again, Nicodemus, religious leader, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And eventually, the Lord convinced him that this was an important experience. All these things, you see, the natural man cannot readily understand. I pray you will understand. I pray you come out of ignorance in Jesus' name. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says in verse 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. You see Nicodemus was say a natural man, born of the flesh. And for a reason like the people of the flesh. And the word of God says the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. As it was at that time, it is like that today. The natural man may go to church. The natural man may go to school. The natural man may know all the vocabularies of uh, the English Bible. And yet when he reads it, because he's a natural man, it's not just the head. It's not just the school. It's not just the education he cannot understand because he's a natural man and it says but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him born again foolishness unto them am I going to enter my mother's womb and be born all over again is foolishness unto them how can these things be is foolishness unto them but you see when God opens your eyes the eyes of your mind and the eyes of your spirit, you understand, this is the wisdom of God. And I pray that tonight he'll grant you that wisdom, that understanding, that revelation in Jesus' name. Uh, let me read the whole of that verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Uh, let's come back to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, I'm reading here now from verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not a witness. If I have told you as things, what has he told him? He told him I've been born again, and he said as asli, that is, it happens here on earth. Being born again is not going to happen after death. It happens here. Being born again is going to happen in heaven. It happens after here. It takes the key. And it takes the ticket that gets you through that gate. And then you get to the kingdom of God. Because except it happens here on earth at the Bible study. Except it happens here on earth while you are listening to the word of God. Except you experience this earthly thing. Being born again being transformed, becoming a new creature, transferring from being of the flesh and coming to be of the spirit. Except it happens here on earth, you'll not be able to enter the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus said, if I've told you earthly things and ye believe it not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? If I tell you the experience you're going to have here, and you can have it now by turning away from your sin and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ who loved us so much. And he gave himself for us. And he died for us so that we can have life in him and life through him. If you do that now, then I'm going to reveal other things to you that you're going to have when you get to the other side in the great beyond. And then he says in verse 13, And no man has attended up to heaven. But he that came from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. That shouldn't be surprising to Nicodemus because Nicodemus himself had said that we know thou art a teacher come from God. Nicodemus, you understand what you have said? And you understand the testimony you have given about Jesus Christ, about the master? And because you said, is the teacher come from God? Where does God live? He lives in heaven. And when you said your teacher come from God, you're saying your teacher that came from heaven. And then Jesus said, Nicodemus, 
get to the logical conclusion and tell me, you told me that I came from God. I came from heaven. I'm telling you heavenly things. I'm telling you what you need to understand that will help you and qualify you to get to heaven. No man has ascended up to heaven. But he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. Look at verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. What's Jesus doing here? Because Jesus had given illustration, illustration in the natural, about the wind, about the water. The water that washes us and cleanses us and purifies us. The water that refreshes us and the water that renews us. All that is natural. Everybody should understand that. And then he spoke about the wind, about the wind that blows. And then it brings life, refreshing life unto all those plants and even to human beings. And Nicodemus did not understand. Okay, if you don't understand that, you have read the Old Testament. And since you have read the Old Testament as a Pharisee, as a ruler among the Israelites, you remember the story. When the children of Israel were going from Egypt and they were going to the land of Canaan, they were going to the land of promise. They were going to that better place, better than the place they were coming from. You know something that happened on their journey? They sinned against the Lord and then snakes were biting them. And then they went to Moses and he said, look at this, we're sorry for what we have done. And then Jesus said, do you remember that story? As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of a man be lifted up that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have, tell me, eternal life. And then he brought it to a conclusion now, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Tonight we are looking at the study, eternal life through Christ, the only savior. Eternal life through Christ, the only savior. That's what Jesus spoke about. Everlasting life eternal life, the very life of God that comes from heaven and descends into our heart. And then we have that nature of God, that life of God, that character of God, and that spirit of God. And it turns everything around and changes everything in our lives. For God so loved the world. He's talking about you. He loved you because you are a personification of the world. You are a representation of the world. Everything in the world is inside you. If you are not there, if I'm not there, if we are not there, the world is not there. He's talking about us. But God so loved you in the world world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever whosoever i thank god for this over here tonight whosoever is he there i said whosoever is she there what is she there what is she there the lord will grant you that eternal life the life of God will be real in your life in Jesus' name. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. As I said, we're teaching tonight on eternal life through Christ, the only Savior. There are three things we're going to look at as we study this passage. Number one, the ignorant concept and reaction of the learned. The ignorant concept and reaction of the learned. Here you find a learned man. And he had his own concept. It was an ignorant concept. And then he had his own reaction to what Jesus Christ was saying. Point number two, the infinite compassion and regeneration by his love. The infinite compassion, infinite mercy, infinite grace, infinite tenderness, infinite favor, the infinite compassion and regeneration by his love. Regeneration. I've told you before, if you've been coming to the Bible study, generate. When you generate something, you, know, you produce something, you create something. When you re 
generate. You generate it all over again. You create it all over again. Regeneration is a recreation. It recreates your life. It recreates your spirit. It recreates your personality. It cre recreates everything about you. And it is because of his abundant love towards you that makes him to have that recreation. If it has not happened yet, it will happen tonight. You'll be a new creature. He will recreate you all over again. He will touch your soul and touch your spirit and touch your heart and touch your personality. You'll be totally different. You'll be made ready for heaven. Point number two. Tell me point number two there. The infinite compassion and regeneration by his law. Point number three. The inescapable condemnation for rejecting the light inescapable condemnation for rejecting the light you understand that it's like you're walking on a road and somebody who has walked there before knows that there's a ditch in front of you and that inside that ditch there are broken bottles and there are dangerous dangerous things there that if you're fairly inside there you are gone your life will be wasted and then he comes and he says please hold on hold on here is light and he tries to give you light so that you will see your way and see your pathway he says, no i don't need that i'm all right by myself get your way with your light if you reject the light and he pleads what you please that place in front of you is dangerous is deadly and is damning don't go that way get the light and you reject the light eventually you are walking in darkness and then you fall into that and you ruin your life that's your fault you see the people that perish is their fault because jesus christ is the light of the world and he brings the light to them and you say no i don't want the light then you have the inescapable condemnation for rejecting the light we come to point number one somebody there tell me point number one Wonderful. The ignorant concept and reaction of the learned. We're coming back to uh, John chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 9. John chapter 3, verse 9. Uh, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Jesus, and then Jesus answered and said unto him, Are thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Think about this, Nicodemus. Learned, Nicodemus, lettered, Nicodemus, scholarly, Nicodemus, well-read, Nicodemus, well-informed, Nicodemus, versed in historic religion, Nicodemus, respectable, Nicodemus, a leading authority among the Jews, a leading authority in that nation, Yet, how ignorant of essential sin was he, essential truth. The Lord told him, ye must be born again, except a man be born again, except you have this initial experience, this important experience, this essential experience, this indispensable experience, this thing that qualifies you to get to heaven, except you have this, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then this learned man, and this intelligent man, intelligent in every other thing, intelligent in history, intelligent in uh, society, intelligent in uh, human relations, intelligent in religion, intelligent in every other area, but on this one solitary, important, essential, indispensable scene, he was at sea. He didn't understand. And Jesus said, you're a master in Israel, you're a teacher in Israel, and you're a leader, a leading authority in Israel, and you don't understand this. And you know, we can call the preachers of today, many preachers today, they are the successors of Nicodemus. That is, they occupy the seat, they are there, 
and they pose themselves as scholarly people. They've gone to theological institutions. They can tell you about the history of religion, about the history of Christianity, about the history of comparative religion in our country and comparative religion in our continent. They can talk about religion when they started and the date for this and the date for that. But you come to this ABC. The initial thing that we ought to know how we need to get to the kingdom of God that ye must be born again. Look, this learned person that has just been talking about the history of religion now, he cannot understand. He says, Well, I've studied Greek, I've studied Hebrew, I studied Latin, I studied everything. I don't understand this, and that's the pity. And the people that are following after them, they have any religious question, they run to them. And they run to those uh, places where everything is stately and well organized. But the point is, there is ignorance there. Untold millions of people entrust their destiny, the destiny of their souls, to ignorant religious preachers and leaders like Nicodemus. And you know, it wasn't just something peculiar with him. As you look at uh, even John, this gospel according to St. John, Jesus spoke about something very important. He spoke about something very spiritual. And they didn't understand. Let me show you. Look at John chapter 2. John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 19 here. John chapter 2 verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years, it was this temple in building, and will thou rear it up in three days? They misunderstood everything. Look at verse 21. But he spake of the temple of his body. In chapter 2, that was the problem. Look at chapter 3. In chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 3 and verse 4. It says that Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus spoke about something spiritual, about something deep and essential. Every time they transfer it to the physical, he spoke about the temple of his body. They said, this temple, 46 years, was in building. Are you going to raise it up in uh, three days? And Jesus said, ye must be born again. Immediately, they go to the physical and the natural. Look at chapter 4. In chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 10. It says, and Jesus answered and said unto her, if, if, thou knew, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who is he that says unto thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee, tell me, living waters. Look at the answer of the woman. The woman says unto him, sir. Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? You see that? He spoke about something spiritual, and he spoke about something essential. Immediately, they transfer each to something physical. Look at chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 50. Chapter 6 and verse 50. You see, the ignorance is general. It's in the high, it's in the low. It's in the leaders, it's in those who are led. It's in the people who have gone to school, it's in the people who have not gone to school. The ignorance about spiritual things, and thank God you are here today, ignorance will vanish away. Darkness will vanish away. And the Lord will give you the very mind of Christ, and you will understand very clearly, okay, that's what it means. Thank God I am here. And then light will burst in your heart in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 6, chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 50. Chapter 6, verse 50, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven. That a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. It's talking about eternal life now. I'll give myself. I will go and die on the cross. I will bear your punishment. I will bear your shame. And once I die for you, then I will 
will die, you should have died. But I will die in your place. I'll give you life eternal. Look at their answer. Look at uh, verse uh, 52. In verse 52 it says, The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Look at that. They need to understand. Just like many people today, and you're talking about something essential, something important, and something indispensable, and everything to them is physical. Everything to them is natural. I'm looking at chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 33. It says, Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you. Then I go unto him that sent me, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. Look at their answer. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? That we can that we shall not find him. Will he go unto the dispersed of the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? I was talking about going to heaven. He said, I'm going to a place. I'm going to prepare a place for those who love me. And you cannot come there because you are not born again yet. And when I'm gone, you'll be searching for me. Then they began to say, where's he going? Where's he going? Is he going among the Gentiles? And then he'll be teaching the Gentiles. You understand that the people who are natural, they turn everything natural. They do not understand the things of God. Look at chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 32. Chapter 8, verse 32. It says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Somebody there tonight, the truth will make you free. Break every yoke in your life. And break all the chains and all the fetters in your life in Jesus' name. The things that bind you and the things that tie you and the things that make you powerless, that you cannot go in the way of God freely. You don't have the freedom and the liberty to serve the Lord. All that restraint, the Lord will take it away from your life. He'll break the yoke and the chains of your life in Jesus' name. See what he said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See what he said. They, they answered him, will be Abraham's seed. And whenever in bondage to any man, how sayest thou, ye shall be made free. Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. You see, he was teaching them something spiritual, and he transferred everything to the natural. As it was with Nicodemus, that's the way it was with everybody in Israel, with the whole nation. And as it was at that time, so it is today. You can go to any religious circle, and then you bring the sin Simple spiritual things, immediately they'll be thinking about how can these things be? How can that happen? Because they do not believe in the power of God that makes the difference. But for you tonight, things are going to be different. And uh, what's this all this teaching us? What's all this revealing to us? I'm coming to Job chapter 32, Old Testament, Job. We're looking at uh, chapter 32, and I read from verse 7, verse 8, and verse 9. Job, chapter 32, verse, tell me, verse 7, I said, days should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Verse 9, are you there? Great men, tell me, are not always wise. Great men, learned men, men of authority, men of position, men of religion, men here and there. It says great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. We can see it in Nicodemus, a great man in religion. He didn't understand. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, it says, Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person 
Neither let me give flattering titles to any man. You look at Nicodemus, you look at his religious garb, his religious garment, his religious regalia, his religious dressing, and you look at you know what what surrounds Nicodemus, and you look at him like this. Say they say that is so and so, and they give a title in religion. He says, Let me not do that again. Now I understand. I understand. People like Nicodemus, they may have a name. They may have a title, they may have the regalia, they may have the certificate, they may have everything, but they are ignorant of life eternal. And so he says, Lord, because of my soul, because of the destiny of my soul, and because I want to get to heaven, and I want the knowledge that will take me to heaven, help me not to regard the title of any man, and then give all these uh, flattering titles to anyone. I say chapter 42 Isaiah chapter 42 what do you mean from verse 19 Isaiah you need to mark all these in your Bible because now God will show you the light and God will help you that what Nicodemus did not understand you'll understand in Jesus name look at Isaiah chapter 42 I'm reading from verse 19 Isaiah 42 verse 19 it says who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I said, who is blind as see that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant, seeing many things, but thou observest not, opening the ears, uh, but he heareth not. It's talking about people like Nicodemus. You know, Nicodemus, they've already gone through the school of the Sanhedrin. And they've gone through all the things, all the way that they trained their religious leaders. And it's got the certificate hanging there by the wall. And it's got, uh, you know, the garment that they gave him because now he's come out of that uh, school of this and school of that. And it's an authority. And then the people, other people that are coming behind them, they're when in what they are talking, they quote him according to Nicodemus, they quote him according to Gamaliel, they quote him according to so and so, they quote them, and yet all these people they are quoting, they do not understand the ABC of the Christian life, the ABC of entering into the kingdom of God, and they say I am a servant of God I am a person chosen of God, and God says who is blind like these my servants and the people, they are dead. They don't understand. Because they see many things they cannot tell. And they hear many things they cannot understand. And that's the reason why if you want to get to heaven, you're not following other people that have titles. You're not following other people that say that this is their stature and this is their authority. Your authority is the word of God. And the word of God that is simple that says ye must be born again. Even though that man of authority and that man of position does not understand, God will give you understanding. If you are born again, I praise God with you. You've got something that you could must did not understand. If you are not born again yet tonight, you are going to get something that you could must did not understand in Jesus' name. I'm coming to Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8. And I'm reading here from verse 8, Jeremiah chapter 8. We're looking at it from verse 8. It says, how do you say we are wise? And that the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain made he eat. The pain of the scribe is in vain. You see that? It's talking about the people that you know, they've written exams and they've written dissertations and they've done research and now they give them this title, they give them that title in religion. And yet with all that title, they can write a lot, they can publish a lot and yet they do not understand the simple thing of how to get to heaven. And this is what the Lord is putting in your hand and painting in your heart and you're going to have it in Jesus' name. Then it says in verse it says in verse nine, the wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them? Nicodemus, he has rejected the word of the Lord at that at that point in time. He didn't understand. He said, "How can these things be? I don't understand. I don't accept." They didn't teach us that in the seminary. They didn't teach us in theological schools that we've gone to, and I don't understand. But it said that I'm a teacher come from God. 
And that no man can do this miracles that I'm doing except God be with me. And I'm revealing this to you. I pray God will open your heart. You know, that's why they are not saved. And the people who listen to them, that's why they are not saved. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. The, the, the harvest is past. And the summer is ended. Tell me. Tell me out loud. But who are not saved? Because the Nicodemuses that are teaching them, they don't understand what it means to be saved. The people of title, the people of power, the people of authority, telling them this and the religion, and then this uh, religious holiday, and religious festival, and religious feast, and religious sacrifice. They themselves do not understand. And therefore, they have this, everything is coming to an end. And they never come out of those places to come and listen to the simple presentation of the word of God. That's why it says, the harvest is past. It's about closing time. The closing time of the age. And the closing time of the hour. And then it says, and summer is ended. And it says, and we are not saved. I pray that will not happen to you. Uh, uh, there's a verse you need to underline in your Bible. You must underline this one. Say, I will underline it. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, Ecclesiastes chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Tell me the verse. Have you opened it? Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse, tell me, verse 15. It says, Are you ready? The labor of the foolish wearies every one of them because they know he knoweth not how to go to the city. That's an heavenly city, New Jerusalem. That's an heavenly city, is a city of God. That's an heavenly city, is a better city than anywhere in the world here. It is eternal. And to get to that heavenly city, you must be born again. Jesus told the people that are born again, He said, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you who are born again. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself and there are many people who are laboring in religion and they're laboring in everything you can think about they know the kind of a thing you need to do in january what you need to do in april what you need to do in july they know about palm sunday and they know about uh, you know this sunday and that other sunday they know about the good friday and they know about this and about that and they know about the cross they know about you know carrying the cross and they know about you know stretching somebody there and weeping that person and they know about all the these religious things, but the labor of the foolish will yes every one of them because they do not know how to go into the city. Nicodemus, he came and then you can see the look on his face. He was confused. He was perplexed. He had been laboring and laboring and yet he did not know how to get into the city. Your confusion will vanish away. All the perplexity in your life will vanish away. You know, the problem with them now is, apart from just themselves, you see, people of authority, they have a lot of people following after them. And all these people that are following after them, they don't understand that they are Nicodemus, they are preacher, they are priest, and they are leader, and they are ruler, and the one that is trying to lead them in religion. They don't know how ignorant it is. You know, Nicodemus did not come during the day. So that the people see him, he didn't come during the day. He came in the night, Everything he was discussing with Jesus, it was in the night. The confusion, it was private. Nobody knew about that. And if he didn't accept the truth, he will go back and his people will not know that he's still searching for the truth. He has not got the truth because he came in the night. I will not follow people who are not sure of their own selves. They are not even sure they are getting to heaven. And the things that to qualify them to get to heaven, they don't even have. How can I be following them? You will not follow them. I said you will not follow them. Because uh, what they do is this. Look at Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 52. Luke chapter 11. Uh, and I'm reading from verse, tell me. 
verse 52 open your bible it says warn to you lawyers it's not talking to our good lawyers uh, you know in town that are you know defending cases and all that it's talking about this uh, what they gave the, the priests of that time the pharisees and the sadducees of that time the interpreters of the law of god unto the people they call them lawyers at that time warn to you lawyers for ye have taken look at this look at this ye have taken away what the key of knowledge the key of knowledge they said they are the monopoly of the teaching of the bible the teaching of the word of god and the teaching of the kingdom and the teaching of religion the key was in their hands and the average person and the average church goer did not know anything at all they will not read the bible for themselves they will go to them they will go to those authorities and then jesus said you have taken away the key of knowledge ye enter not in yourself and them that were entering in ye hindered they will not hinder me i said they will not hinder me they will not hinder you in jesus name spiritual ignorance is deadening it deadens them to the real life it is deafening it deafens their ears to the real truth it is damning it damns their souls eventually spiritual wicked spiritual ignorance dooms the soul and damns the soul you will not be damned you will not be doomed the light will shine in your heart and this born again, born again, you will have it in Jesus' name. We're coming back to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And I'm reading now from verse 14. Understand, Jesus wanted to help Nicodemus. And he wanted to help, and he still wants to help everyone like Nicodemus. Anyone that is saying, I don't understand, how can that be? I have not got it yet. You'll get it now. I said you'll get it now. Light will come to you your darkness will vanish away the love of god will reach you where you are there in jesus name look at john john chapter 3 john chapter 3 i'm reading from verse i'm reading from verse uh, reading from verse 14 john chapter 3 verse 14 and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up even so must the son of man be lifted up before i continue let me explain that uh, phrase even so the son of man must be lifted up we're looking at john chapter 12 john chapter 12 we're looking at verse 32 john chapter 12 the son of man being lifted up see what it means here john chapter 12 verse 32 and i if I be lifted up from the earth, what will he do? Will draw all men unto me. What's the meaning of that? Lifted up. This he said, signifying, tell me, what death he shall die. That is, he'll be lifted up on the cross. That means he will die for us. That means he'll be crucified. And he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man, to become our Savior, and to become our Redeemer, he will be lifted up on the cross, so that whosoever, come back to chapter 3, verse 15, chapter 3, verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him, that's me, I believe. I said, that's me, I believe. I said, that's me, I believe. Look at verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, what do you have? Eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now about this thing that Jesus said, about the story that Jesus referred to, let's come to Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. In Numbers chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 4. Numbers chapter 21 verse 4. And then you understand what Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, our Savior, he'll be lifted up he'll die on the cross so that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life in numbers chapter 21 verse 4 and he journeyed from mount up by the way of the red sea 
to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Are you following the story? You see, they were going on their way. They were on a journey. You see, you're on a journey. I'm on a journey. We're journeying. Sometimes a journey in education from primary to secondary to college to polytechnic to university is a journey. Sometimes it is, uh, you know, in a journey, you are an apprentice and then you are with your master. You are selling the market. Then you are, you are set free and then you start your own market and you start this. It's on a journey. And sometimes you are like a medical person and you start in the secondary school you do all these subject science subjects and then you go to special and in that you're on a journey anything anywhere you are sometimes you're a boy and then you become a teenager and then you become a young man and now you are married and you're a husband and you're a father you're on a journey sometimes you're a lady and then you're a girl and then you're a teenage girl and then you become a lady and then you become a, a wife and then you become a mother and then you become a homemaker everything is on a journey we're on a journey and in our journey look at our life sometimes we get discouraged sometimes we're unhappy sometimes we're sad and when we are sad we take it on the people around us i'm sad and because of that i'm rude to the other person i'm sad because of that i'm naughty i'm sad because of that in this journey that's what happened to them here they were on a journey and they were much discouraged look at verse five and the people speak against god God and against Moses, wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For, it, for there is no bread, neither is there any water. And I was so loathed this light bread. You see, they began to complain against God. There is sin against God. Look at the Ten Commandments number one, number two, number three, number four. Those are commandments that we shouldn't do this because if we do them, that's sin against God. And then number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten. Those are commandments related to our neighbors. And if we do any of those things, we're sinning against our neighbor. And so the sins we commit, the evil things we do against God and against man. And these people, the same thing, you see what they've done here? They spoke against God and they spoke against Moses. And then the Bible says, the soul that sinneth, tell me, it shall die. There is punishment for sin. Look at verse 6. And uh, the Lord sent fairy serpents among the people and they beat the people and much people of Israel, tell me, died. The wages of sin is tell me out loud it's death the wages of sin is death and because of the sins they were committing because of the things they said because of the things they did because of the attitude they had and because of that evil life punishment came on them but then when the punishment came and they were dying and they were dying and then the serpent would bite this and bite that and the pain and the poison was getting all over their body look at what they did in verse 7 therefore the people came to Moses and they said, we have what? Tell me out loud. Did they cover it up? He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. They said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people look at verse 8 and the lord said unto moses make thee a fair serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that every one that is beaten when he tell me looketh upon it shall live it says i want remedy for everybody you see, he didn't uh, make the remedy difficult to save. You know, serpent has beaten somebody. And the fellow is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And then if he says you have to go there, and you have to crawl there, and you have to physically get there, some people would not be able to. And so all what that was being done is that they lift up the serpent of brass on the pole. And then when the serpent has beaten anyone, very easy for everybody to do. A child can do this. A boy can do this. A girl can do this. Just look up. And the man can do this. And the woman can do this. Just look up. Educate 
educated person can do this, or the educated person can do this, just look up, and the person who has who is well traveled can do this. A person who has never left his village can do this. That whosoever, whosoever will look on that brazen serpent will come to life. Look at verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole and it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man when he beheld the serpent of brass tell me you will live i said you will live but look at what Jesus was saying. He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh, let's recapture the story now. Number one, they all sinned. Because the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They all sinned. Because you see, they spoke, they spoke, they spoke. It affected man and woman, boy and girl, low and high, everybody. And it's the same thing. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Number two, the serpent's poison caused death. Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody said the amen. Yeah. Number three, they confessed and they repented. They came to Moses. They said, we have sinned. They didn't say, it's because of this. So, so and so pushed me. So and so discouraged me. They left all that alone. They didn't give an excuse. Because if you give excuse, that's not true repentance. That's not real change of mind. They said, we are the guilty ones. And so when we come to the Lord, remember that story is an illustration for us to come to Christ so that we can have eternal life. Thank God you have eternal life today. As they confessed and repented, so we confess and we repent. What does the Bible say? First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 9. First John chapter 1, tell me your verse. Verse 9. It says over here, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will forgive you. It will cleanse you. And he'll take all the load and all the bondage and all the burden of sin. He'll take it away in Jesus' name. And the penalty of death that shall have been upon you, that penalty of death will be taken away. The punishment, eternal punishment that you should have bought because not, they came, they came. And the Lord said, whatever, however long they had committed that sin, however long they had spoken against God and spoken against Moses, whoever, whosoever will look Come to that brazen serpent, he will live. And the Lord is telling you that tonight that Jesus Christ has died for you on the cross of Calvary. And whosoever believes in him, you will not perish. You will live in Jesus' name. Number four, the remedy was lifted up for all. The remedy was lifted up for all. It was not only lifted up for the tribe of Reuben, or for the tribe of Simeon, or for the tribe of Issachar, or for the tribe of Zebulun, or for the tribe of uh, Manasseh. Lifted up for everybody. The people who don't understand, they say, okay, okay, Jesus Christ is for the Americans. Jesus Christ is for the Indians. Jesus Christ is for those other people. You see, I was was not born in a Christian religious home. And for you who are born in a Christian religion, Jesus Christ is for you. No. All the people that have sinned, all the people that were suffering because of their sin, all the people that if they don't repent, they will go to hell. Jesus Christ is the universal remedy for everyone. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. As he say people there tonight, you'll be saved in Jesus' name. Number five, the remedy was for everyone. Everyone, The remedy was for everyone. Thank God, Jesus is for me. I said, Jesus is for me. I said, the Savior is for me. Will be for you in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. And we're reading from verse what? Verse 9, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Look at this crowd with glory and honor. 
that he by the grace of God should taste death tell me should taste death tell me for every man he has tasted the death for you he has died your death you will not die you will not perish because it's been lifted up so that whosoever will believe on him will have everlasting life number one they all sinned against god we've all sinned against god number two the serpent's poison caused death the wages of sin is death number three they confessed and repented he that covereth his sin shall not prosper but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy number four the remedy was lifted up for everyone for everyone and jesus christ has been crucified for you number five the remedy was for everyone that was beating and then number six now there were no exceptions no exceptions everyone everyone whosoever whosoever and whosoever looked up as they believed they were healed they were delivered and they had eternal life and number seven the promise of salvation is for whosoever. The promise of salvation is for, tell me, whosoever. The promise of salvation is for, tell me, eternal life is for, tell me. Look at this, look at this. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 15. Watch for the word, whosoever. Look at it. It says in John chapter 3, verse 15, that was the next word. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Look at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That, what's the next word? Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Let's come to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 21. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 21. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever. That means tonight that salvation can come to you. That eternal life can come to you. All you need to do is look at Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary. Because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts chapter 10 verse 43. Acts chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 43. Acts 10 verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness. That through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. He'll remove your sin. He'll cleanse your sin. He'll forgive your sin. He'll change your life. Because all the prophets give witness, united voice that they spoke with. That whosoever, whosoever believeth in him will receive pardon, salvation, forgiveness, Remission of sins. We're looking at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 13. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. You will read this one. I'm waiting for you. You are going to read this. Romans chapter what? And verse. Are you ready to read? One, two, three, go. Read it as if you are united. One, two, three, go. Whosoever, whosoever, salvation is for everybody tonight. I say salvation is for everybody tonight. You know, some people that say, I don't know whether salvation is for me or not. Salvation is for you. I don't know whether God will forgive me or not. He will forgive you in Jesus' name. Because it says, for whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be same revelation chapter 22 we're looking at the last chapter of the bible now and see from the from that john will be coming and coming and coming and now we come to even the final book of the bible revelation chapter 22 and in verse 17 look at this look at this it says and the spirit and the bright say come 
And he that is, uh, he that uh, heareth, say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And uh, what's the next word? Whosoever will. Whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. It's available for you. You will not reject it. You will not despise it. You will not push it away from you. You make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior tonight. He'll forgive your sin. He'll take all your guilt away. You say, see him on the cross. He died for me. He tasted death for every man. He died the death I should have died. Thank God I'm on my way to heaven. Somebody there, thank God I'm on my way to heaven. I said, but my way to heaven. You will get there in Jesus' name. We come to point number three now. The inescapable condemnation for rejecting the light. The inescapable condemnation for rejecting the light. We're coming to John chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 18. From verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. As you believe on him tonight, all the sins you have committed before that should have brought condemnation to your life, all those sins, they're forgiven. No condemnation for you anymore in Jesus' name. But now go on, it says, in verse 18, it says, but, there's a but here, he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, the only Savior, the only light, the only Redeemer. The only substitute, the only one that can take us away from our sin, there's no other person that can save you. If you reject this, there's no other way of salvation. That's why it says, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he believed not in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Look at verse 19, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. Light, Jesus Christ, who said, I am the light of the world. If any and follows after me, he will not walk in darkness. He said, this is their condemnation because light is coming to the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Those who are evil and they love their evil and they embrace their evil and they swallow their evil and they swim in their evil and they are hidden in their evil and they want to continue that evil way because of that they hate the light because of that they don't want salvation because of that they want to perish i will not perish I pray that God will help you that all those things that will have damned your soul and condemned you, you repent in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh he to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Let's look at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verses 15 and 16. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to some people. How many people? Because salvation is available for every creature. And preach the gospel, the good news to every creature. But look at verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But, but he that believeth not shall be damned. The people that say, I'm already a religious man. I'm already a religious woman. And what I am doing, I'm satisfied with myself. You're satisfied with yourself. God is not satisfied. You're satisfied without Christ. God who sent Jesus Christ, you're saying, God is not wise enough. You're saying that God did not know the right thing to do. You're saying that God made Jesus Christ to come to the cross of Calvary and to die. And it was unnecessary. It is necessary. It is important. It's essential. It's indispensable. That's why you sent Jesus Christ. If you don't accept that, you'll be damned. Because he that believeth not shall be damned. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. Hebrews chapter 2. We're looking at verse 3. Salvation has come to you. You will accept. You will believe. 
you will receive and eternal life will be yours in jesus name hebrews chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 3 it says in verse 3 how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which had the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him it says salvation is available but how are we going to escape the judgment of god if we neglect if we overlook if we toss aside if we say no i don't want that now i'm already people recognize me i'm already in religion religion does not save only jesus can save and that's why he died for you to bear your punishment on the cross of calvary that's why it says how shall we escape the judgment of god if we neglect so great salvation which had the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him hebrews chapter 12 in Hebrews chapter 12, here we're reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 25. It says in verse uh, 25, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25, See that he refused not him that speaketh. The Lord Jesus Christ has been talking about ye must be born again. See that he refused not him that speaketh. He has spoken not as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so the son of man will be lifted up so that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. See that he refused not him that speaketh for if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven he's speaking and he's saying give your life to the lord tonight and be saved and as you give your life to the lord you'll be saved in jesus name you see, you, after the Bible study, you might uh, meet somebody like uh, Nicodemus, but he's uh, not uh, totally listening to the word of God. And then you are beaming with joy. Praise the Lord. I heard about being born again. I gave my life to Christ. I've given my life to Christ. Now my sins are forgiven. I have the joy of salvation. I'm on my way to heaven. And then that person say, come on here. Sit down here. Let me talk to you about uh, this. All that thing, uh, that is not uh, real. Let me show you something. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. Isaiah chapter, tell me. Verse, uh, tell me. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 verse 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because it is because there's no light in them if you tell them about your testimony praise the lord i'm born again now praise the lord my sins are forgiven now i learned that jesus christ died on the cross of calvary and then i looked on him i believed on him my mind is clear he has got to prepare a place for me and then they say no that cannot be true that cannot be right how do you know it's not right i'm the one that said i have the joy of salvation and you don't see my heart and i have the freedom the things i used to do before i cannot do them anymore my life is new if any man be in christ is a new creature all things are passed away and behold and behold tell me and behold all things have become new it happened to me i are saying it's not true if they speak not according to this word it is because it is because there's no light in them any light inside there I mean, in your heart over there, any light there? Are you in agreement with the word of God? Your salvation will be confirmed in Jesus' name. And I pray that this salvation we have got, and those who are getting it today, you'll never miss it. You'll never lose it. And the joy of salvation will go back home with you in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, I'm reading here from verse 10. 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Look up here for a moment. 
God said, this is my only begotten son in whom I am well pleased. And God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever in the wild, in the wide world believeth on him will not perish but have everlasting life. And then the almighty God said, that's the record I bear of him. And then you turn your back and say, no, I don't accept. You make God a liar. You say, God, you are a liar. I don't accept. I don't believe that Jesus is your son. I don't believe that Jesus, your son, will come be my savior. I don't believe that just anybody can look up to Christ and be saved. God said, whosoever believeth on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. If you call God a liar, can you get to heaven? You accept the word of God. I didn't feel like that before. I didn't know that before, but now I believe. I said, but now I believe. I said, but now I believe. I said, now I believe. It will be unto you according to your faith in Jesus' name. Look at verse, look at verse 11. This is the record that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. This life, eternal life, abundant life, spiritual life, the very life of God is in his son. He that has the son has life. Verse 12, he that has not the son of God, what? Has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that she may know that she have, that she may know that she have, that she may know that she have, eternal life and that she may believe on the name of the son of god the people who reject there will be punishment for them in eternity after death but the people who accept there will be joy there will be peace there will be eternal life and then we are the people as when you leave this world because you have the ticket you have the key in your hand and then you go through that gate you'll get to heaven Today, I believe on Jesus. I said today, I believe on Jesus. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. He has taken my sins away. And I look up to him. I believe. I will not believe Satan. I believe in Jesus. I give my heart to Jesus. And forever and ever, forever and ever, until the end of my life, I belong to Jesus. What are you? Stand up and tell the Lord. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. He died for me on the cross of Calvary. No turning back. No turning back. I give my heart. I give my life. I give everything I've got. I give it to him. I belong to Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I forsake idol. I forsake occultism. I forsake idolatry. I forsake evil. I forsake darkness. I believe Jesus died for me. Jesus died to take my sins away. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Tell him you believe. Tell him you believe that he is your savior and he takes all your sins away. He'll give you peace of mind. He'll give you joy in salvation. He'll give you the victory in your heart. He will write your name in the book of life. Lord, I believe. I believe on Jesus is my savior. I have eternal life. I have everlasting life. I have regeneration. I have a new life. Christ is living on the inside of me now. Stay there. Pray and make sure that you have this eternal life before you go back home.